Elden Ring has a cast of characters that all have their own quests for the player to complete, and in return, they give some useful or not so useful items. I want to show off these quests and beat the game while only using items that I get as rewards from completing them. But what exactly is a quest? Since there's no quest log in the game, I have to come up with a definition of what a quest is. And I think it's any task, whether that be dialogue, retrieving an item, beating a boss that can be completed for an NPC. So here are the rules. I can only use items that I earn by completing quest steps. If something is necessary to complete a quest, then I am allowed to do it, and I must beat all 15 Remembrance bosses. Make sure to subscribe to not miss runs like this in the future, and follow me on Twitch to watch live. Samurai is the starting class because of the very solid dexterity and strength. Because of the rule set, a mage build isn't really viable, and you'll see why soon, so instead it's better to go for stats that are focused on melee builds. Before I can move, I make sure to remove all of the items that are equipped on my character by default, and then proceed to gather the things that anyone would normally gather at the start of the game. I talk to Melina to receive the flasks and the torrent whistle, and since I'm talking to an NPC to grab them, they fit into the definition of quest, so I am allowed to use them. But the upgrade materials for flasks are not quest rewards, so I'm stuck with four charges of plus zero flasks, and this is why a mage build wouldn't be very good considering I don't really have a whole lot of FP total. Then I grab the Physic, but obviously since it isn't a quest reward, or necessary to complete a quest, I can't use it, so I immediately take it off of my bar so I don't forget and accidentally end up using it when I'm not allowed to. Then I have to figure out a way to get a weapon from a quest with only my fists. Kenneth Height's questline seems like the best option for this. All I need to do is take out this Blood Knight and then talk to Kenneth to get a dagger. How hard could it be? Okay, well, it turns out it's pretty hard, but fortunately I don't actually have to get good at the game because I can just climb this ladder and continuously kick the knight off of it. Now, some of you may be asking if I'm allowed to use the bloody slash skill I just got for completing this quest step. And for this run, the answer is no, because in my opinion, in order for something to be a quest reward, the quest has to cause the item to become obtainable. And since this knight is always here, whether or not you do Ken's quest, then it is not a quest reward. But what is a quest reward is this urge steel dagger. And then next up, I recruit a little bit of help by picking up the jellyfish summon from Roderica and the summoning bell from Rena. Then I start Yura's quest line so that I can eventually get a real weapon and not this glorified poking stick. This starts by facing Narius and letting Yura tank while the butthole bandit fishes for backstabs. Then going to Liernia, picking up the Academy Glintstone key and using it to get into the Academy. The reason why I'm allowed to use this non quest reward item is because it's necessary to progressing multiple quests, so it's within the rules. Then I put on the butthole bandit costume again and help Yura defeat the Raven Mount assassin, rewarding me with the Raptor of the Mists Ash of War. The next step of Yura's questline is in Altus Plateau, so I'll just ride the Dectus- uh, Oh, oh, that's not gonna work. I can't do that because the Dectus medallions are not quest items and they aren't required to progress any quest. Okay, well, that means I'm going to need a better weapon right now before I can fight my way into all this plateau. This starts by going to Weeping Peninsula, talking to Arena, then to her dad, Edgar. Then I have to defeat Leonine Misbegotten with the help of my jellyfish summon, and then back to Leonia to meet Edgar the Revenger and completely disrespect him with a cliff. This gives me the Banished Knight's Halberd plus 8, which is a massive improvement over the plus 0 Urge Steel Dagger. Then, to try to enter into Altus Plateau, I have to take on Magma Worm Makar with no armor, a plus 8 Halberd, and a Dream. Chunky damage. Oh, motherfucker! I, I didn't know what he was doing. Who's talking shit about my spins? Huh? 
Now that I'm in Alta's Plateau, that lets me progress Fia's questline very quickly by just talking to Fia and D, allowing me to eventually loot the twinned armor off of D's corpse. Then I go to the final step of Yura's quest to face Eleonora and more importantly, receive the Nagakiba. Thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. They're a meal delivery service with chef-crafted recipes and pre-portioned ingredients that get shipped directly to your door, so you can spend less time meal planning and more time with family this holiday season. Seasonal favorites like cowboy turkey and black bean chili, mushroom ravioli with kale and walnuts, or sweet corn and green pepper chowder are all available right now. Save money compared to takeout and get quality, fresh ingredients for food that is even healthier. The ingredients travel from the farm to your home in less than seven days. I made some beef flautas supreme with my mom, which are essentially crispy beef burritos, and I can guarantee that without HelloFresh, there's no way I would be eating anything close to this good. Because one, I'm not a great cook, but HelloFresh makes cooking good food easy. And two, I do not have enough time to plan out, experiment, and cook anything close to these recipes. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code BUSHY70 for 70% off plus free shipping. Once again, that's HelloFresh.com using code BUSHY70 for 70% off and free shipping. Now, with some extra runes, I go to level up my Banished Knight's Halberd. But hold on, I hear you saying. How are Smithing Stones quest rewards? And you're right, for the most part, they aren't. But collecting bell bearings and giving them to the Twin Maiden Husks is a quest step. And on top of that, if I wasn't allowed to do this, then this run would just be the plus eight Banished Knight's Halberd for the whole time, and that wouldn't be nearly as fun for me or for you. So I think this is just a better interpretation of the rules. Now, there's obviously a loophole here where I could kill merchants to get their bell bearings and give them to the Twin Maidens, but I'm not going to be abusing that. After that, I had a member of my Twitch chat remind me that I can get a golden seed through a quest by giving Roderica the Chrysalid's Memento, but unfortunately, I had already progressed too far and I had locked myself out of completing that portion of her quest. She did still leave behind the golden seed, but since I didn't earn it through progressing a quest, I'm not allowed to use it. Oh, I kind of wanted the jellyfish. Just getting fucking bullied, dude. Now, because of how many quests are there, I want to gain access into Volcano Manor. This starts by talking to Raya, getting her necklace back, and then holding her hand so she can introduce us to her cult family. From there, I can gather contracts to go take out other tarnished for free loot, like the scaled armor set, which is an improvement over the twin sets. After that, I go to the Albinaric village to pick up the Halig Tree medallion so that I can convince Latena to incinerate herself and jump into my pockets. On top of that, gathering the Halig Tree medallion makes and shit and fade the next time I go to round table so I also get the royal remains armor sets. Then I go back over to the Mistwood to find Blythe, I talk to Kale to get the snap emote, then use that to talk with Blythe, letting me summon him when I take on Darewill the Bloodhound Knight. Progressing Blythe's quest this far lets me talk to EG about it, which lets me buy the Carrion Filigreed Crest, which I will be using for this upcoming fight against Radon. All right, I can't spirit summon in this fight. Oh, 
I had let go of L2 a while ago. I thought I definitely had time. That was close. All right. Love to see it. Now, as he's going up. Nice. Now with the spare runes from the Radon fight, I can level up and switch weapon to the Nagakiba for now until I get my endgame weapon later. I also take the opportunity to progress Millicent's questline by taking out Commander O'Neill, letting Gowry repair the needle, then giving it to Millicent so that she will give me the plus five dexterity talisman, which will obviously pair well with the Nagakiba. After that, I go into the newly opened hole in the ground, pick up the Ghost Glowwort Bell Bearing 1, and fight the Mimic tier. Jesus, man. Can you fight? I'm getting bullied by my own mimic tier. Oh, fuck. I gave him the royal remains sets. <laughs> Ow. Ow. Fuck me. I thought he was going to step back and heal. I didn't account for how much of a giga chad my mimic tier was. He doesn't give a shit about healing. All gas, no brakes. I guess I'm going to do this. Very nice. Going to let the stamina regen. Stamina regen. Ow. Uh-oh. Nice knowing you, Latina. What? Does his poise reset when he goes into phase two? Because he should have, he should have staggered from that. Very nice. Dude's a goddamn pin cushion, dude. Jesus. <laughs> what? Look at him. Here we go. I could summon Latena, but I actually think I want um I think I want more FP for this. Nice. Yeah, probably could have done Latena, but it is what it is. Now. Uh, you hold your horses there, brother. There we go. Very 
nice. Love to see it. Absolutely beautiful. Okay. What? I thought that would definitely stagger him. Oh, fuck. I ended up on the wrong side of him there. Wow, really? Oh, shit. No, bro. Wait, wait, wait. Let's go. Not even close, bro. Regen the stamina. Charged attack. Now, there is a mess of four interlocking quests that all need to be completed in a very specific order. First, I progress Bogart's quest by just buying a prawn off of him. Then, once he moves, I buy as much crab as I can because this is a solid 20% physical damage negation buff that lasts 60 seconds that I would like to have for the rest of the run. And he's about to die because I need to progress Dung Eater's quest. This is done by picking up a seedbed curse, then talking to him in roundtable, then freeing him from underneath Lame Dell, and then finding him by Bogar and defeating him when he invades. After that, I need to progress Solivus's quest. I gather the potion, then give it to the Dung Eater so that I can turn him into a summon in case I want to use him later. It was important that I didn't give this potion to Nefeli because she is needed for a different quest line a little bit later. And on top of that, Dung Eater is pretty much the best summon that Solivus can give anyway. Then I collect five Starlight Shards to buy two total puppets off of Solivus so that he will tell me about his plan to overthrow Ronnie. At which point I will give him the Amber Starlight Shard and he will give me the Magic Scorpion Shard. Now, finally, with those three quests done, I can safely progress Ronnie's questline without locking myself out of anything. But before I do that, I take a quick detour to complete Nefeli's quest by defeating the Omen Killer in the Albanaric Village, then looting the Stormhawk King from the Chapel of Anticipation and giving it to Nefeli so that she, Gostok, and Kenneth Height all show up in Godric's throne room to reward me with an ancient dragon smithing stone that will be useful soon. Now, to progress Ronnie's questline, I gather the Finger Slayer Blade and give it to her. She gives me the inverted statue in return, which will be used a little bit later. After that, I go to the teleporting tower next to Ronnie and pick up the Ronnie doll, then talk to her while sitting at its side of grace. Then I have to fight the invader version of Blythe to get the discarded palace key and make my way to the Lake of Rot. Normally, the Lake of Rot wouldn't be an issue, but on this run, I only have four plus zero healing flasks. The strategy that I come up with for getting past it with my small amount of healing is is rolling in the lake of rot to make it cover my body and give passive buildup outside of the lake. If I get rot this way rather than from directly standing in the lake, it gives me a weaker version of scarlet rot that does much less damage. Then I make sure to have the royal remains armor equipped, which will heal 8 HP per second while below 18% health. And then I make sure to use my healing flasks as late as possible. That way I maximize the amount of healing that I'm getting from the royal remains set. With that done, I'm finally ready ready to take on Estelle. Okay, that was close. Whoop. Not today, bit. 
Not today. What are we doing? Come on. One more. There we go. Love to see it. And now we need to go. Oh. Shit. <laughs> All right. Uh, we haven't done Rhea Lucaria yet. Ow. <laughs> Hello, my son. Goodbye, my son. This fucking guy, dude. I swear. He, he always just finds some way to do some weird shit. Never leave him alone. But look at him. Look at him. What, what are you doing? Okay. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Bro, hit the damn child. Oh, couldn't one cycle. All right, it is what it is. Now. Maybe not a great idea. Get out the moon! Going in. Can't stop me. Can't stop, won't stop. Bang! Can't stop, won't stop. Now that I have access to Rinala's room, I can pick up the Dark Moon Ring with the discarded palace key that I got from defeating Invader Blythe a little bit earlier. This lets me access the Moonlight Altar beyond Estelle's boss arena and lets me marry Ronnie, and she didn't sign a prenup, so I get to take the Moonlight Greatsword. This also triggers the end of Ronnie's questline, which makes Blythe go mad and become aggressive. So I put him down and gather my endgame weapon, the Royal Greatsword. I don't quite have the intelligence to use it yet though, so I use the inverted statue to go to the Divine Tower in Liernia and pick up the Int Talisman, then level up the Nagakiba to use it until I get enough levels in Int for the Royal Greatsword. Dagger. Swing on me, bitch. Very 
very nice. start. Okay. Three unsheaths to uh, to kill him or uh, stagger him. Stop running at me. Fucking attack priority, dude. Godskin duo is going to be annoying as always, so instead I go to take out Reichard first so that I can level up a little bit. But before Reichard dies, I need to complete most of Volcano Manor's quests so that I don't get locked out of any of those weapons and armor sets. I start by getting the second contract for Riley the Idol, then the letter to Bernal to help him on his contract in Langdell, then the letter to Patches for his contract on Great Horned Tregoth, which gives the strongest armor in the game, but unfortunately I just don't don't really have the endurance to put it on. After that, I make sure to talk to Patches multiple times so that he gives me the magma candlestick, and I tried for a while to take out Hoslo, but he was honestly just way too annoying, and I didn't care enough about Taker's cameo to spend the time, so instead, I just went to fight the Godskin Noble and Reichard immediately after. I know you want to do that fucking blaster attack. Brother. What? What? All right, I'm confused, bro. Love to see it. And because the ghost guy told us directly, explicitly, said, use the serpent hunter spear, something along those lines. Brandish the spear and run him through. We get to use it. What we're doing, Chief? Oh, fuck. Hello, hyper armor. I don't think I have enough stamina. Okay, why'd you get staggered there? I don't understand. Ow. Daggers? Mod check? Oh, 
I close enough? Uh-oh. <laughs> Oopsie. I let's go devour some gods, baby. Uh God damn it. I'm just trying to get my runes. Come on, get there. Okay, I'm I'm getting there first. That's first priority. Oh. Why are you not doing Well, see you later, runes. Nice knowing ya. Now we can devour together. Sedge. Oh, that's not the move I thought it was. I do not mean to be doing this. <laughs> yes. Strange way to do it. Now, with my extra levels, I can get my intelligence high enough to use the Royal Greatsword and level the Greatsword up to plus eight. This does first require me to gather the Somber Bell Bearing one and two, though, so that I can properly buy the necessary smithing stones. Mm. Ah, I'm fat rolling. <laughs> It's not nearly as good as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the Naga Key was a better option, honestly. Ow, motherfucker. I mean, we just need to abuse stance breaks. Fuck you, noble presence. Woo! Yeah, we're, we're just gonna leave him. I don't want to transition him to phase two, at least not right here. doing why did I swing twice okay Boss. Getting past Godskin Duo means that I can now finish Alexander's questline. I do that by talking to him in Radon's arena, then talking to him again at the bottom of Volcano Manor, then finally by fighting him in Furumazula to get the Shard of Alexander, which is a massive 15% boost to all weapon skills. Then I also went back to Round Table Hold to visit with Rajer. 
When I completed Ronnie's questline a while ago, that caused Roger to die, and I'm just now going to pick up his armor set because it gives 2% damage per piece for weapon skills that do magic damage, like the Wolf's Assault weapon art. Okay. Well, what? I thought for sure I was out of range. Okay, well, he's dead. Now all I have to do is hitless Nile. How hard could that be? <laughs> oh, fuck. doing I disagree <laughs> ow what we doing chief okay he recovered from that way too quickly that was wild Scumized. All right. With the full Halig Tree Medallion, I can now go to the Consecrated Snowfield and, more importantly, complete Lieutenant's quest. She's kind of just been sitting in my pocket for most of the run, waiting for me to get here. Once I summon her up in this church, she gives me a somber ancient smithing stone in return, which will let me level up the Royal Greatsword to max level. I think I already lit all the deer fires? Yes. Come here, bitch. God damn it. All right, fine, whatever. Do the sucky sucky. Come here. I have 1500. This weapon is fun, but God damn is it slow. Doing sucky sucky again, isn't he? Oh no, sucky sucky! Love to see it. Do I have time for that? Not really. I'll only have time for it on. Uh the uh the blast the blood flame blast into the swing oh i thought i would have time to weave there guess not chief stop walking backwards Okay, jump too early. Press the button too early. That's fine. Cool. Okay. Oh, 
motherfucker. I, I fucking hate. I hate these goddamn NPC fights, dude. You're a fucking rat, you know that? See, look, Roger isn't a rat. Why did the last guy have to be a rat? Lieutenant died at death status. Do you get staggered? Well, not with endure, that's for sure. Holy penis. Ha! What is this? Fuck you, give me my goddamn repost. God damn it, Lieutenant's already dead, dude. I, I hate player characters. All right. Just fucking blast him with unsheath. Okay, I'm gonna need a whole lot of fucking explanation as to how my sword goes through this dude's chest. And he decides, nah, dog, I'm good. I mean, look at the size of him. My brother, he is 370 fucking pounds of pure thick. And you're telling me that I missed him? All right, Merry Christmas, Jesus. Man, I know the comments are going to be roasting me for this one. No, Bushy, get three death roots so that you can get bestial vitality. It'll make you have so much more health. But I'm just now doing it. Even though I could have done this way earlier and probably died a whole lot less. But Blithe Sword is definitely not the most powerful option that we have. But it's fun. So I'm using it. Where you going, big dog? Going on a goddamn adventure. Hey! You rat. Come here. Come here. Come on. There we go. Oh, I really wanted that to get the direct impact. Didn't get it. Oh, well. All right, there we go. Now, the L2 is going to be too long of an animation to weave between the lightning strikes for sure. Wow. A fucking jumping off. Wow, holy shit. The recovery time on these shit. So long. I I fucking hate camera reset, dude. Ow. Is this lasers? No. God fucking 
damn it, dude. Love this piece. Right in the butthole, baby. Bit uh, ambitious. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think we're gonna be able. Well, we'll be able to press the L2 in Malekith fight, but not in Beast Clergyman. I. I see it. I jumped too far. For okay, this is not going to work. Okay, somehow I didn't die. <laughs> Come here, chief. So I think if you just hit him like once, he kind of just like stands there and stumbles around for a while. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, this is working way better than I expected. I'm not going to lie. Okay. All right. This should be fun. I'm going to L2 over his stomps. damage sir <laughs> right, l 2 ing over his stomps looks cool it doesn't work okay can't do jumping heavy can i do charged heavy Kinda. Jumping lights. All right, I don't, I don't know if I can actually get away with that. We're gonna have to see. Jumping lights. Well, still don't know if I can get away with it. All right, can't get away with it. Good to know. And I went for it again. It's all right. Just look at us. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, this is fine. Whatever. What's up, big dog? Poke. Roll. Poke. Roll. Ice. brother Whew. god Hoi. nice knowing you there big dog see y'all later my brother Gonna let me fucking do a punish? Thank you. Jump too early, son of a bitch. Need to go slower than that. 
I intentionally waited quite a while. Um, we're definitely dead at this point, by the way. Can I L2 during this? I don't know if that's safe. But it would be a, a nice convenience. brother thank you for letting me get a punish window chief all right there we go That's gonna work. <laughs> That's sick. This seems like a great option for this fight. I mean, okay, it's not guaranteed, but... Yeah, that's a great option for this fight. All right, love to see it. To remember how to actually fight Millicent or fuck Melania. It could be nice. Hmm. It's a bit too slow, it seems. Yeah, too slow. I really wish I could punish that. That'd be, that would be so good. Make my life so much easier. I'd get so many more staggers. It does have a tendency to just fucking flip to where I need it to not go though. Bit of an issue. Okay. God fucking damn it. It's stuck on her body again. Too bad. I 
I don't know if this is gonna work. Yeah, it looks like it works. We take those. Uh oh. Spinning all the fuck all the way the fuck around him. God is that dude. God damn. Clapped his cheeks. Can I get a third off? No, I cannot. No stagger for me. Oh. Wait, I thought he was doing rings. Let me hit you, you fat bat. Alright. I believe our stagger's gone, but whatever. Elden Star's avoid was not by running away from them. It was by doing specifically exactly what I did with the positioning. When you run under them like that, hey, I'm deceived. There it is. Quest rewards only. Clapped up.